friends, welcome back to the garage. My name is Jim with Philly Fixed and I'm so glad you're here because today we're going to talk about cleaning your power tools. Now, if you look around online, there's a lot of advice on how to clean tools uh, from mechanical means like a uh, Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. Uh, you know, those things are great and they work on a lot of stuff. Things that are textured like this though, um, you know, can leave behind bits and just start to shred on you as you really work those things. Other guys talk about brake clean and stuff like that. Um, but maybe, you know, if you're like me, you, you try to minimize how much you have to use harsh chemicals, um, it, you know, both for the environment, but personally, just because it's not good for you uh, long term. So uh, if you don't want to use brake clean or something like that, and you don't want to deal with scrubbing with a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser, um, I saw this product over on Millis Construction. I'll put the card up above to his channel. Uh, but it's called Ballastol. Now, I'd never heard of this before I saw his video. He was talking about it in the context of really protecting and cleaning metal tools, right? Putting a thin layer on it to prevent rust on pliers and things like that. I thought I would try this as a cleaner on, you know, nylon, glass impregnated nylon power tools, which is what most of these housings are. So I will say I read online on their product page uh, it says to use caution on non-oil resistant uh, plastics or materials. So the only thing I'm wondering about is some of this rubber over molding, I don't know how resistant to oil it might be. In the case of impact wrenches, you would hope they're meant for automotive use and they'd be relatively oil resistant, but who knows. So what I'll do is I'll follow up with this video uh, if I find that any of these surfaces start getting gummy or deteriorating, but I kind of don't think they will. So it says right on the bottle, Skin safe, no carcinogens. You can use it on uh, leather, knives, tools, locks, um, as a lubricant, as a protectant, as a cleaner. Um, it can even be used on wood as like a, kind of like a, you would use tongue oil apparently. I, I don't know, I, I know it's been around since I think World War I or World War II was developed in Germany. I'm not sponsored, but uh, I just wanted to do some reading because I just, I can't believe I haven't come across this. Um, it is more popular in the, uh, community of people who use things for home defense and hunting. I don't want to say it because of the YouTube algorithm, but I think you know what I mean. Uh, so it's classified as a CLP in those groups. Uh, and apparently it's pretty well liked. So, you know, if you're a full-time mechanic, you might not think that these tools are very dirty, uh, but they're moderately dirty. And if we get up close, you'll be able to see. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'll put some masking tape on and we'll do a before and after of cleaning with the Ballastol. So let's get to it. Why don't we start with uh, the DeWalt impact wrench I've got here. Uh, I was using this working on my truck. You can see it's, you know, got a little bit of dirt and grime on it. Again, it's not terrible, but it's pretty dirty. It's definitely, you know, seen some use, right? So what we'll do is we'll take some automotive grade masking tape and we'll put it right down the middle on the top here. and we'll get a nice line. We'll pretty much line it up with the clamshell where that splits on the housing. And uh, we'll leave the DeWalt brand side dirty and the information label side, model label side, is what we're gonna clean. So you don't need too much of this. It does come with a straw, which I lost already. Um, apparently I lost the spray cap too. Anyway, so it has an interesting smell to it. I, I don't know what's in it, um, but it doesn't smell bad. It just smells interesting. I don't know how else to put it. So we're just gonna put just a little bit on there. I mean, just barely damp right there. So let's see how it does here. Gonna get all the nooks and crannies. Looks like it's doing a pretty good job. We'll put a little more on here. Again, just a very, very light spray. Don't need a lot. It's looking pretty good. Got 
get around the front here, around the trigger finger, around the forward reverse switch. Where it says, get that label, it says brushless. All right. Now, the moment of truth. Can you see that on the camera? Nice and clean, pretty dirty. Again, I used very little of that stuff. You know, I rubbed a good bit, but I, I, it wasn't like 20 minutes of scrubbing to get that side clean. And here's the original side. Got our Ryobi die grinder. Okay, so I'm gonna try something different on this one. I'm actually gonna put the tape around the tool. Okay, so we're kind of just, just the very edge of the O is exposed, all right? We got it all the way around. We'll do the bottom here too, but again, we'll just use a little bit here. Not a lot, not soaking the rag. Look at that. Lighting's a little tough, but pretty, pretty rapid improvement on the tool there. Look at that. That logo just immediately turning white. It's pretty cool. Again, we'll see if it hurts the rubber over time. See the back, the brushless text. It's a little bit, a little bit dirty. Cleans that right up. Again, you know, there's other things you could use. You could use Brake Clean. I've heard that like an orange-based citrus product might work, but you know, this isn't harsh. It's not, you don't have to worry about wearing gloves, getting it on your skin. Um, just seems great. Now it's not cheap. I'll put, I'll put the Amazon link below and you know how Amazon prices are. Um, but it was, I want to say it was in the twenties of dollars, but as you can see, so this is a twenties of dollars for a an aerosol six ounce can. You can get it in straight liquid form. You can also get wipes. Um, probably the straight liquid form is gonna be the most cost effective, but you know, the aerosol is convenient and I'm not using, I'm hardly using any to clean these tools. So I think it'll last a while and uh, I'm not gonna blow right through it, but let's take this tape off. So hopefully you can tell it's clean here, dirty that way. And then on the, uh, on the top here, you can kind of see that line right there where this is dirty and that's clean. All right. Again, not super dramatic because my tools aren't absolutely filthy. Let's try the old rigid impact wrench. All right, so the rigid brand side, we will clean and the other label side will leave dirty. So a little, little grimy there. I'd say that brightened it up pretty well. Let's try the top here. See, it's taken, this right here is all fresh dirt. The rag was already stained, but. <laughs> you could probably even get in here with like an auto detailing brush if you wanted to. Maybe even get a little bit more of the embedded dirt out. I have the battery on here because this thing doesn't stand up very well <laughs> without the battery on. Look at the results. So you can see the dirty side and clean side. Rigid logo looks whiter.
So again, it's not super dramatic, but in person, this looks a lot cleaner than this does. So again, here's the DeWalt. See the dirty side versus the clean side. So there you go. Hey, well, I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, if you did, please hit that like button. Please consider subscribing. I've got links to this stuff on Amazon down in the description below. Thanks for watching. My name is Jim with Philly Fixed. God bless you guys. Hello, I'm Jim Davis.